Hello everyone, and this is the first video of 2022 for me, and I hope everyone is doing well, and I'm very excited uh, to share with you today a couple things. Um, this video can be broken into two parts, uh, first of which is you'll get a chance to see if you haven't already the integration of the Electrosonics DCR822 and Wireless Designer and what that looks like in the interface. And the second part, which I've been working on in the background as I approach my next project, is the workflow of how it looks for using Wireless Designer in a uh, small cart. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, first, I need to show you something that I think you'll find um, interesting, which is really on the topic of small carts in general. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you a picture here. So this is uh, my primary sound cart that I use, uh, I'd say, 90% of the time, 85, 90% of the time on set. If you feel like it, go ahead and guess the weight uh, of what you think this cart is. You can put it in the comments. Um, I can tell you that I haven't weighed it physically because I don't, have access to a device that can weigh this but um, I do know that for it is at minimum 225 pounds so the reason why I'm starting this video showing you this cart is I want to also then show you another photograph this is a ramp uh, being built by our excellent brothers in the grit department here on my last show that was the ramp that we had to wheel all of the carts inside to the location and you can tell uh, that it is just absolutely horrendous and scary so if you work in production and you're a production sound mixer obviously you're not a stranger to having to deal with these type scenarios so this is why, and this is the primary reason why earlier this year I set off to build uh, my small cart. So now, uh, late last year in September, Electrosonics announced this compatibility with the DCR822, and I uh, have deployed it, uh, I've been messing with it, and now I've developed a workflow here moving forward to be able to move from this small cart to the large cart. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Um, and move to uh, wireless designer here. Um, most of you watching this video are familiar with wireless designer. Um, it is a software that is free from Electrosonics that allows you to do frequency coordination. And if you have compatible products with it, you can connect to this device. So speaking of compatible products, let's go ahead and connect to the DCR822. So, on my cart, before we connect, I'm just going to jump back here real quick. This is the, literally, this package, which is uh, here on the screen facing me so I can actually operate it. Here is the 822 here. You can see the two quarter wave block 19 whips that I'm using. This is the device that I'm connecting to Wireless Designer. And the interface uses a simple USB connection. So um, I'm going to go ahead and connect first and we'll take a look on the first part of this video of what the 822 looks like inside a wireless designer. So we're going to go ahead and connect via USB. And as you can see, it pops up right away and it shows the serial number and the device type, which is the DCR822. I'm going to press OK. And then immediately uh, you see a few different things. Um, here on the left hand side of this session window you see that we are connected and these are the frames and the only frame i have connected currently is the dcr822 which shows me the external power and also to the right here are the two receiver channels now before i go into the receiver channels i'd like to show you the settings real quick so inside of the settings and the receiver panels we're basically able to control pretty much everything that you would have to do inside of the DCR822 on the receiver itself. So I can control the front panel, backlight timeout times. I can also create encryption keys for using digital wireless, 
Also, I can send and receive different tuning groups and also see the firmware versions that I'm using. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the uh, receiver view mode. I'm gonna go ahead and double click so you can see here some of the settings that are available. So we have both receiver and transmitter settings and I can power on or off the receiver module. I can also easily change the receiver name from here. Um, I can do custom tuning ranges and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how and why I did that for some of my custom channels later. And then I can also choose the diversity modes. And one of my favorite features here on the DCR822, I mean, there's many features I really appreciate, is the compatibility mode. So I do have some of the D squared I, uh, DPR transmitters, which have been excellent for me. And I can also use some of my um, digital hybrid wireless transmitters with this system. So it is backwards compatible which was critical for me when integrating into a digital system. So that's really, really nice feature to have that there. And also we have our uh, audio mute, audio output types. There's obviously AES and analog. This is a very powerful portable two-channel receiver. So um, that, as far as interface is concerned, is pretty much what I want to cover. So by itself, well, we could do a frequency scan. Here's the last scan I did here inside of my studio. Um, I could clear this and go ahead and start it again. And as you can see, uh, the scan is currently scanning on the wireless designer graph here. And it's worth mentioning that it's all the way full frequency from 470 to 607.900 in the US. And here on my A22, which it is scanning along with it. So everything that I do inside a wireless designer immediately updates to the 822. So if I start my day with the small cart, the first thing I would do is I would connect and then I would scan if I was in a new location. But there's another step here because I'm gonna go back to my setup here and, and you may remember that I said I have 10 channels a wireless on here. Obviously, I've got more than a DCR822 on a small sound cart. I also have uh, here at a frame, um, I've got a PSC six pack for six channels in switch mode, um, a DCR822, which is eight channels. And then I also have a uh, SMQV uh, IFB transmitting. And then finally, I have a base station 75s, but I said 12, because there is 12. The other two are my comm channels for my crew to talk to me, because we have all way communications. So there's actually 12 channels of wireless on this system. So how do I manage all that in wireless designer? And more importantly, how do I move from a small cart workflow to a large cart workflow and keep those organized and efficient? So Let's go ahead and go back to the wireless designer view. And we're going to uh, do an, the next critical step. So what I did, I'm gonna show you something first, is I'm gonna show you add custom channel. So here is where you could add every single channel that's in your system. So whether you're using 411A or you're using other types of wireless systems such as Zaxcom, Sure, Sony, they all have their particular uses and strengths and most likely if you're working as a professional you're using these things so you're going to need to plug all of these things into custom channels and then when you're done you're going to export those custom channels to a file now this brings me to something very very important that is the organization channels i have in my wireless designer folders so as you can see here we have custom channels project files reports, which we can cover a little bit. I didn't plan on covering this in this video, and then scans. So those four folders and it, saving that particular data is how I can use Wireless Designer for the duration of a film or TV show or whatever you're working on. So once you do that, you've got your different folders and different file structures. The next thing I'm gonna do after I scan and before I coordinate anything, actually, it would just be connect and scan. 
is I'm then going to uh, import the custom channels from the file. So I'll choose the custom channels. Here they are here. And this one is the one I have been working on and creating very carefully and cautiously. And I'm gonna go ahead and open that here. And now, as you can see, uh, I have all 12 channels in Wireless Designer. That is the DCR822 uh, channels one and two, my IFB, which is an SKM, SMQV, uh, old blue label r running in quarter watt, which is just killer for IFB, um, COM one and two. These are some Sony wireless I have for my comms in the 941 band, which is just an excellent band to work in. And then I've got my six SRC channels and then the Comtech Base Station 75. Most of you guys know, because a lot of you here and most of you on the channel are working as professionals in the field, that we have to coordinate everything on a system. Um, it's not just the talent wireless or the boom or these. We have to think about everything. So the software that we use, obviously, will need to include everything on our cart. And the use of custom channels also allows us to deploy other wireless into the system that may be in a venue or area. Notice here that we can lock these channels. So the Comtech Base Station 75 is locked and so are the two Sony comms and then also my IFB. That means mostly when I'm doing coordinating, I'm, I'm not going to move those around. Usually those will stay at certain frequencies unless they're problematic. Notice here is all of my custom channels. Notice that these SRCs are named here. Um, let's see here. We have one SRC1-B22. That stands for block 22. SRC2-block 23. Now I'm going to go ahead and open one of these up. The reason why it's block 22 is because remember, uh, like I talked about earlier in the video, is that I have a mix of um, digital hybrid and digital transmitters. So this SRC is uh, actually wideband, does three blocks. However, the transmitter I have assigned to this particular receiver is 22. So what I'm able to do is I'm able to tell wireless designer when it does frequency coordination, to limit this particular receiver to block 22. So I don't ever have to worry about it going anywhere else. That's very important when doing a scan, when you're matching different types of transmitters is making sure each of the receivers are set up. And another one I'll show you too, that's even, I had to modify even farther, was this SRC number two, block 23. Notice I chose block as in none and actually did a custom frequency range from 588.8 to 607.900, which is the legal FCC limit. The old receivers, before they made the changes, went up to 614. However, the transmitter that I have, uh, block 23 transmitter, only goes to 607.900. With the digital landscape of what's happening right now, with 5G and all of the 2.4 gigahertz in a compact space in high power on a film set is really creating and the and the shrinking frequency band obviously with the T-Mobile auctions and I'm sure you guys heard about the DOT not wanting them to deploy their new 5G technology because it's interfering with airline equipment the same government that's auctioned off this stuff in the first place through working in a very congested RF space in a very challenging environment the last six months, I've been able to find the right approach or the right balance of how to get the wireless to work optimally. And at the end of the day, it was never the gear. It was never like, oh, the gear doesn't work. This, it doesn't work. It's the engineering, guys. It's RF engineering from an operator standpoint is what we're doing as production sound mixers. And sometimes it's as simple as moving the antennas from one side of the room to the next not always the gear. So what happens if tomorrow I'm going here with the big cart, right? So first things first is I'm going to want to save uh, this to a session file. And the session file, I'll just go ahead and put here under wireless designer under project files. And I'll call this uh, DCR822 uh, WD tour, because we just kind of 
did a few changes just for this video. And today's date, which I believe is the 8th, 2022. And go ahead and save that project. So now um, that should be saved. So if I want to coordinate my large cart for this particular frequency set, when you are connected to a device, you also have the ability to open what's called an offline session. And that's what I'm going to do now. So an offline session, I have one here called large cart. So now notice here that we have an offline and also connected. The offline, this is my production sound cart, which you can see actually has quite a bit more going on. This is my main cart. And in the frames, it's showing me that I have two DSQDs and also a venue low wideband. So here are my two DSQDs. There's my venue low wideband. So I can actually come back here to my connected session. I can go to my frequency scan and I can export this to a file, which is what I'm going to do now. And I'll come here to the scan and I'm going to name this, uh, we'll call it uh, studio location. And me being the old Pro Tools guy that I am back in the day, I date code everything. That's just how I, my mind is trained. 010822. And we're going to put this in the scan and then do this. So now I can go to the offline session. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to want to import the scan data to the off that I just saved here to this session. So now I have the scan data that we did here when we started the video for my large cart, which isn't anywhere near us right now. And I can go ahead and do a frequency coordinate for that particular cart right here. So I can coordinate selected channels. And something that's cool that I'll show you, um, let's go ahead and apply changes and leave, is notice here on my DSQDs, I also have this same thing deployed where I'm using custom ranges for particular transmitters I have. Let's do one more thing. So this time now I'm going to load session from file and choose the DCR822 tour and then I'm going to get a pop-up window that's going to assign. So it sees the DCR822 and the serial number and it also I can choose to bring in or not bring in the custom channels. I can choose to bring or not bring in the frequency coordination scan data. And then it says load session successful. And as you can see, all of my, uh, my DCR 822s are connected now and everything is uh, back to where it's supposed to be. I also want to mention that uh, with the Kantar Mini uh, there is the Hydra function, which is extremely useful for plugging in these frequencies. So I'm not having to go plug in or, you know, manually go through these SRCs to put in frequencies. And with their latest firmware update, I can go from diversity to switch mode. That's a really powerful thing on an SRC, by the way, in diversity mode using both receivers for one channel. If you don't need the channel count, can really hot rod those things as far as range and performance is concerned. If you have questions uh, about Wireless Designer uh, specifically, you can go here to help and you can do online help and then it will actually launch uh, the Electrosonic site where you can physically, you know, get the manual and everything you need to know about it. I think that about covers us. I'm going to go ahead and sign off for this evening and I appreciate you guys watching. And um, I'll look forward to uh, seeing everyone very soon.